sorry, Paul. This is all wrong. What? You'll have to do it over again. It's not worthy of you. Throw it all out, except for that part of naming the gravedigger after me. You can leave that in. I really value your criticism, but maybe we're being a little hasty here. Paul, what you've written just isn't fair. Not fair. That's right. When I was growing up in Bakersfield, my favorite thing in all the world was to go to the movies on Saturday afternoons for the chapter plays. Cliffhangers. I know that, Mr. Man. They also call them serials. I'm not stupid, you know. Anyway, my favorite was Rocket Man. And once it was a no-breaks chapter. And the bad guy stuck him in a car on a mountain road, knocked him out, and welded the door shut, and tore out the brakes, and started him to his death. And he woke up and tried to steer and tried to get out, but the car went off a cliff before he could escape. And it crashed and burned, and I was so upset and excited. And the next week, you better believe I was first in line. And they always start with the end of the last week. And there was Rocket Man trying to get out. And here comes the cliff. And just before the car went off the cliff, he jumped free. And all the kids cheered. But I didn't cheer. I stood right up and started shouting, this isn't what happened last week. Have you all got amnesia? They just cheated us. This isn't fair. He didn't get out of the cock a duty car. They always cheated like that in um, chapter plays. But not you. Not with my misery. Remember, Ian did ride for Dr. Cleary at the end of the last book, but his horse fell jumping that fence, and Ian broke his shoulder and his ribs and lay all night in the ditch, and he never reached the doctor. So there couldn't have been any experimental blood transfusion that saved her life. Misery was buried in the ground at the end, Paul, so you'll have to start there. <laughs>